The first comes with the gospel. The second comes with a call for reform. Okay, the gospel is what? The gospel is the truth about God. The second calls for reform. Reform from your old ways and live according to the truth about God. The third comes and explains the judgment of God upon those who reject him and the judgment of God upon those who accept him. Okay? The judgment of God for those who accept him is found in verse 12. The judgment of God upon those who reject him is there explained, especially in verse 10 and in verse 11. Now, what I want to do with us right now is I want to review how Paul presented the three angels' message. I want to go with you with how Paul presented the three angels' message as the revelation of the truth about God. Do you see the three angels' message in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through verse 12? Paul presented the very same thing. The very same thing. So if you would with me, turn with me to your Bibles, to the book of Romans and chapter 1. And we are going to see just how Paul, we're going to see how Paul presented the three angels' message. Of Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through verse 12. Let's remember, let's remember that Paul, Paul, who was Paul? Paul was the one who, who was persecuting the Jews, the children of Israel, the children of God, rather, the Christians. Paul was persecuting the Christians. He was killing them. He was beating them up because that's how he understood God functioned. Um, he understood that God, uh, if you don't, if God has like a mentality of like, do as I say or else. That's how Paul understood God to be. Paul, he, he, he followed a dress reform. He followed health reform. He knew about the sanctuary. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. He said, I was circumcised the eighth day concerning the law. I am blameless, right? And Paul knew the Bible version that he should read. He had his particular Bible version, you know, that he was probably sticking by. I'm just making a little bit of a parallel here. But when Paul met Jesus, everything turned around. Notice Paul's presentation. Notice Paul's presentations of the, presentation of the third angel's message. So here in Romans in chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Paul was separated unto the gospel of God. Okay, so Paul is here to present the gospel of God. And we're going to see how Paul shows that the gospel is the truth about God. So notice in verse 15, Paul says, As much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. So the third angel's message, it begins with the presentation of the gospel. So here in verse 16, Paul is going to begin with the presentation of the gospel. Again, we're going to see how Paul brings forth the three angel's messages right here. In verse 16, Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To the Jew first, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, we've been saying and constantly repeating that the gospel is the truth about God. Paul here says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to those that believe, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The fact that God can save you reveals to you the truth about him. The way that God saves you reveals the truth about him. So it's not, the gospel is not merely about our salvation. The gospel is revealing to us the truth about God in the way that he saves us. Write that down if you have to. The gospel is revealing the truth about God in the way that God saves us. So the gospel is not just God saving us. The gospel is revealing to us something about God. It is not all about us. It is all about him. The great controversy is about God. We were created as the answer. 
We fell in sin, short, fell short of the glory of God. God's purpose for us has not changed. He would still use us to vindicate his character, but now he has to come. And when he comes and his activities are revealing the truth about him, what was his activity? He died. What was his activity? He saved us in his death. So the way that Christ died, the way that God saved us reveals to us the truth about him. Let me keep on going because Paul says the same thing very in verse 17. For therein, meaning in there, inside the gospel, for therein is the righteousness. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Therein is the character of God revealed. Therein is the truth of of God reveal from faith to faith for as it, as it is written the just shall live by faith the third angel's message is the message of righteousness by faith it is the message of justification by faith in the righteousness of Christ. And justification by faith in the righteousness of Christ reveals to us the love of God because this faith only works by love. And the last message of God to this world is the revelation of his character of love. And that's the gospel that God presents through Paul and, 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 but now the third angel's message is not just doesn't doesn't just have the gospel in the gospel. It also reveals to us the warning about the wrath of God, the results of you rejecting the gospel. And so it, it would make sense that Paul is going to talk a little bit about the wrath of God, even as we find in the third angel's message. And that's what he continues to do in verse 18. He says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodly men. Is that what that says? The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all men. Is that what the text says? No, the text says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So Paul is going to get into what is the wrath of God that is revealed unto these, unto ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, unto those who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Paul's going to get into that. He, he didn't explain the wrath of God just yet, but he told you that the wrath of God is going to be upon these people who hold the truth in unrighteousness, who know the gospel but are rejecting it. Paul is going to explain the mechanism of the wrath of God. Notice what he continues by saying. He says, because that which may be known of God is manifested in them. That which may be known of God is manifested in them. God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him, who from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. No one has an excuse. No one has an excuse. To say they don't know God. No one has an excuse. The heavens declare his glory. Verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination. They became what? Vain in their imagination. And their foolish heart were darkened. They became vain in their imagination. Reason was dethroned from their mind. Do you see that? They became vain in their imagination. They were drunk, vain in their imagination. They were drunk with the wine of Babylon. Second angel's message. They were drunk with the wine of Babylon, vain in their imagination. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. The fool says in his heart that there is no God. You see, reason is dethroned in their minds. They have this particular view of God that was originated by the enemy of every single soul in this earth. Verse 23, what did they do? 
and they change the glory of the uncorruptible God. Is not that what Babylon has done? That's why the angel says, come out of Babylon. Don't be drunk with her wine. What did Babylon do? They, 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 they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image. Into a what? Into an image made like corruptible man. You know what 666 is? 666 is the number of man. That's what it means. 666 is the number of man. They changed God into an image like the corruptible man. Do we not see this thing right over here? Do we not see this thing right over here? There's going to be an image set up and it's going to be the image of man. No, it's the image of the beast. Yes. What is the beast? The beast is represents what? Kingdoms, the Bible says. The beast represents manly, secular governments. And those governments are born of the mind, the vain imagination of man. We got to go deep, friends. We got to go deep, friends. Nebuchadnezzar's statue. Nebuchadnezzar's statue. If it was a real man, do you think that there was a brain in there? So you see the statue. Let's say that in that statue, there were all the faculties of humanity, a liver, kidney, in that statue, a brain. What is the mind? What is the mind of that statue, of that beast? What is the mind? It's the mind of the enemy of all souls. It is the mind of the devil, drunk with the wine of Babylon, with a misconception of the truth of God. Let's keep on reading. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to the corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and corruptible things. Wherefore, follow this, wherefore, because of this, because they rejected the gospel and made God out to be something that he is not and worship false gods, worship Babylon, because of this. Now, Paul is going to explain the wrath of God. Paul is going to explain what happens. He's going to have to explain because he just said the wrath of God in verse 18. Now, Paul is going to explain it. What does Paul says? He says, wherefore God beat them up. Is that what Paul says? What, what did God do to those who chose to worship those impotent gods? What did God do to those who chose to uh, uh, take the wine of Babylon, those, that false, that wrong imagination, who accepted those false theories and lived according? What did God do to those who had the truth right in front of them, but they said, no, I don't want that? What did God do? They are going to suffer the wrath of God. Paul says it. Paul said in verse 18 again, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. Okay, they're going to suffer the wrath of God. Now, how does Paul explain it? Paul explains it how? Paul says in verse 24, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Why did God give them up? Why did God give them up? As Paul's saying here, why did God give them up? Verse 25. Because they deliberately forfeit, forfeited the truth of God and they accepted a lie. Why did God give them up? Verse 25, who changed the truth of God. What is the truth about God? The gospel is the truth of God. In the gospel is revealed the righteousness of God. In the gospel is revealed the truth of God. What did these people do about the truth of God? What did they do? They changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. And so because they did that, what did God do? Paul goes on and says it again. What did God do? Because they did that. What did God do? Paul said, 
For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. This is Paul's exposition of the third angel's message. You saw it, now you can't unsee it. 